I, as I descend into mental disintegration and madness, I become more and more convinced that reality is more like a novel than a series of integrated tensor equations of the third degree, which is what physics would have us believe. The world is like a novel. It's a novel in which you are a character. And there's dramatic tension, plot, resolution, tragedy, nobility, betrayal, the whole gamut of emotions and human possibilities. And what we tend to do is always to marginalize first our own experience and then all human experience. So we, our model of reality is that the universe is a zillion somethings that direction and a trillion somethings that direction. We are tiny and insignificant. Our star is typical. Our galaxy is typical. Everything is utterly humdrum. And there's nothing going on here at all. Well, this is an incredibly dreary and disempowering model of reality. I would rather believe that if, in fact, what the universe is is a novelty producing and conserving engine, and if we define novelty as density of connectedness, then guess what? The human neocortex becomes the center of the cosmic drama. Because the human neocortex is the most densely ramified and connected material object known to exist in the universe. So after a thousand years of human marginalization, suddenly through the injection of science, there is permission to believe that the cosmic drama really is about us. That we really do carry... Uh, the the load in this play that this is a play about the career and preservation of novelty and complexity and thus we are central actors in that drama and hence if something were to happen to us and our enterprise the universe would be vastly impoverished by that loss well now we're on the brink of decoding the human genome and we will use computers to do this because we're going to have to keep absolute track of millions of units of strings of characters but the end result of this I think is that the flesh will be made word and that we are textualizing our reality and this may be what all these French people are screaming about that we can't understand, the so-called deconstructionists, because they keep saying reality it should be dealt with as a text. If you don't treat it as a text, you will entirely miss the point of it. Well, I've been thinking about this for a while, and I've first of all, my life is very strange, because when I hit the mushroom at La Chirera in 1971, Interpol was looking for me. I had a price on my head. I had no money. I had blown my college education. I had no job skills. I had nothing. And that is, of course, as all folklorists know, uh, the precondition for exaltation. You, if you're not poor and humble, I mean, what's the point, you know? So I was poor and humble, and then I got crossed up with this mushroom, and immediately life became art. Life became uh, freakishly ordered, and plot elements began to unfold. And I have in my mind a picture of the curve of my mission, if you want to call it that. And weirdly enough, reality has not yet departed from the curve. Now the curve is getting steeper and steeper. And at some point, surely, reality and the curve will depart. Otherwise, um, <clears throat> decency forbids that I carry that thought further. But... You do see what I mean, I think. And all of us 
are beginning to take textual control of our lives and be able to write the plot. You see, if what we're embedded in is a novel or some work of art like a novel, then what you want to do is figure out who in the novel you are. I mean, if your name is Joe Blow, is the name of this novel The Lives and Worlds of Joe Blow? Or do you get to draw a bath for someone on page 230 and never be seen again? Now, as a character, the more conscious you become, the more you have free will within the context of the plot. I never understood this. And I'm not sure most people understand it. Like, like I grew up in Berkeley in the 19, you know, I was in Berkeley from 65 to 70, the golden age. I was so unconvinced of my own uniqueness that I never understood that the great drama that was unfolding around me, all I had to do was join and I never joined. I thought it was spectator sport. I mean, I, I marched in the marches, I took acid, I got laid, I did all of those things. But what I mean by I didn't join is I didn't realize that the Grateful Dead were a bus ride away and that I could probably walk into that scene and make a place for myself. Or the Doors, or the Stones, or the Beatles, you pick it. In other words, I defined myself as a spectator rather than an actor. And we are all doing that far too much. You can get a lot rowdier than you are. You can make a lot more waves. There's been too much politesse and uh, too much uh, parlor etiquette exercised recently by uh, the counterculture. It's perfectly all right to mix things up. It's perfectly all right to try and accelerate the plot, this will move your character nearer and nearer to the center of the action. And people have asked me then, is the goal to make yourself the, the novel about you? Is the goal to make the novel about yourself? I don't think so. The goal is to become the author of the novel. Then you can write any damn ending you want for your character or any other. And this becoming the author is this psychedelic detachment. And suddenly you go from being a chessman, a chessman on the board, to the chess master looking at the board. It's empowering. It's self-control. Now, people who don't know this are like made of denser stuff than the rest of us. You can just part them like wheat and move through them because they have no sense of the nature of the game. They are still embedded in the old Newtonian paradigm and, and are completely powerless to control their own lives. That's what happens to you in the Newtonian game. All the power flows to, I don't know, the White House, the UN, Madison Avenue. It's not clear, but it certainly doesn't reside with you. More and more, I think we need to decondition. That's what I mean by following the plot as written. If you never decondition, you're, you're just a character in somebody else's story. But if you decondition, you can begin to move your life the way you want. And miracles happen. Uh, miracles do happen. They happen even to ordinary people in the realm of, of falling in love because there's something about where the genes go that is very compelling to the universal logos that's watching over us all. So, you know, the stable boy can marry the princess if his heart is pure and the winds of the Logos are at his back. That's why we love those fairy tales of the stable boy who inherits the kingdom, because we sense that as uh, our story.